May 2023, I created a new PvP alt and headed with my holding alt straight to army in low sec with the goal of surviving solo against all odds while making some kills. Today, I'd like to give you a quick introduction to my main account in EVE Online. Meet Monica, my lovely main character since 2012. I play her as a kind and friendly pirate who has forged enduring and trustworthy friendships in null sec and low sec throughout her more than 10 years EVE Online journey. Since 2012, I've been playing her as a lovable PvP pirate. Sure, she may blast other players out of the space, but always in a fair and endearing manner. What I love about EVE Online is the freedom to jump into various roles. Whether it's playing the hero or the villain, being kind or aggressive, or simply giving your tune any role you desire. The possibilities are endless, and that's what makes EVE Online truly remarkable. On the other hand, there's my tune. Well, I play her as a dark soul, yes that's true, very dark, solely focused on herself and her own advantage. She doesn't care if she bothers or coerces others as long as she can benefit from it. As Jack Sparrow once eloquently said, I want to steal, plunder, pillage or simply let my treacherous black soul roam free. Let's take a look at what the Reds are up to in ARMY. In my latest video, I've hidden some easter eggs. You know that my tune has a very, very, very dark soul and set up a little challenge for them in the latest video that only they can comprehend. And of course, they promptly and obediently took on my bait. After that, it seems there must have been some serious issues within their corp. The first easter egg resulted in Prananoi Capsular leaving the corp or being kicked out. He rejoined later. The second easter egg also led to a corp departure or a kick out of corp. They had threatened me, saying we will grieve you until you nerd range, but of course those are just empty words. They're like actors in a script, playing their roles perfectly, and they are doing exactly what I manipulate them to do without realizing it. As often happens, the rats are camping my station. However, their strategy hasn't improved. This time they're using a drake and a legion. Please always remember, when your station is camped, never shoot back. They will easily tank the station guns. Just stock up or warp to your DDoC pings, as I explained in one of my recent videos. Naturally, they fail. By the way, when attempting to catch someone at the station, always overload your weapons for maximum DPS. Perhaps they want to prevent me from undocking, but the way they're doing it is completely senseless, without brain any strategy. It highlights the importance of setting DDoC pings. Remember how to set a DDoC ping. First, undock from a station, and second, burn straight out at at least 150 kilometers. Third, then set a ping. Name it DDoC plus station name. If your station is camped, simply warp to the ping. I mean, PvP veterans might catch you, but not these amateurs. Currently, as always, Sheriff Hangover is sitting at the gate, waiting for easy targets to jump in. I fitted a ship that is fast enough and can still fire at a range of almost 120 kilometers. Let me show you how easy it is to make Sheriff Hangover warp away from the gate. Here's the deal. Warp to the gate at a distance of 100 kilometers, but never warp any closer. Keeping distance is everything in that case. Ah, uh, look, there he is, sitting mindlessly with his old in a short range Brutex at the gate. 
I flocked onto him and started shooting. Please always remember, don't, never ever, stay still in space. Orbit the gate at 100 kilometers. For sure, he will have to warp away. It's very simple to make him run away from the gate. And of course, it wouldn't be Sheriff Hangover, the master of clear thinking and elite PvP, if he didn't completely lose his mind in the local chat once again. He had already blocked me in the local chat a while ago, and now unblocked me again. Back to the block list, child. See you soon. <laughs> yes, he entertains me. He manages to make himself look like an idiot, both in the local chat and out in space. He is helpless in his actions. Well, how could he not be? You can't kick anyone out of low sec. The game mechanics simply don't allow it. He learned his lessons in the past weeks. The question is, does EVE Online have heaven and hell? Mm, I mean, if there's a hell, where would it be? It's in Tama. Tama is the hell of EVE Online. It's nearly impossible to survive here as a solo player, especially as a newcomer. I mean, just take a look at the gate camp here. To be honest, I like it. So if you're new to EVE, it's hard to say, don't visit the devil. I have decided to improve my security status from the current minus 10 to 0 in order to travel more freely. Please note, if you play as a bad character like I do, avoid pod kills as they can quickly lead to a minus 10 security status. By avoiding pod kills, you can prevent your security status from rapidly falling. To improve your security status, you can either spend more months shooting NPCs or you can visit a security station in EVE Online. There you can buy the required tags, and if you have around 400 million ISK to throw away, then go for it. You can instantly transform from a bad girl to a good girl, but remember, being good is only on paper. Next, I built a super fast ship for speedruns. It can reach speeds of nearly 5000 without implants and over 6000 without overloading. Now I just need to add implants and I'm using snake implants for that. They significantly increase the speed, bringing the overheat speed to almost 8000. The ship has a damage output of 600 dps, which is incredibly fast. With a few boosters, you can further adjust the speed, dps and weapon damage with some nice shiny shiny implants. I believe I've spent around 3 billion on implants and boosters. Unfortunately, I realized that my skills were once again not high enough to use all the snake implants. It's one of the fails when starting with a new character and wanting to have maximum fun. So I had to buy two more large skill injectors for 1 billion each to bring my skills up to the required level. Shopping experience, 400 million for the security status, 2 billion for the skill injectors, 1.3 billion for the ship, and 3 billion for the pod. That's what I call luxury shopping. I mean, in the end I'll be flying a 3 billion pod. It's all about style. Do you prefer driving a Fiat 500 or a Porsche? I'd rather be in a Porsche, and a 3 billion pod is like a Porsche. Just a great feeling. On the street or in space. Warning, please don't buy the implants if you're not financially stable. Seriously, I don't recommend it. But if you're like a Porsche driver with no financial worries, hey, do it. Do it! I mean, I'll eventually lose the pod and someone will shoot it down for sure, but who cares? 
It doesn't bother a Porsche driver if he crashes the Porsche into a wall. Maybe it annoys the Fiat 500 driver, but not the Porsche driver. They'll simply buy a new one. People are always thrilled when they shoot down an expensive part. But when someone has invested three or four billion in a part, they'll just buy a new one. They don't care. The special extra kick for me is, you're alone in low sec, surrounded by hostiles and flying a three billion pot. Fly safe, my friends, but always fly in style. <laughs>